Tiraron. Friends, hi and uh, good afternoon. This is a patient with MR catch. If you see it very clearly, uh, the first incision which we will do is right on this peritoneum, right on this peritoneum. But we are not going to be attempting a peritoneal pull through in any of these situations. We have with us Sanchari, and Sanchari is the one who has published this entire data for us. So a big thank you to Sanchari for you know going out of her way. And then publishing it for us. I also have with us Dr. Saurabh sir. He is our chief anesthetist. Hello, Saurabh bhai. Saurabh bhai. Hello. And the important thing which a person should understand from an anesthetist, as far as doing surgeries for MRKH is concerned, is that a lot of these young girls also present to us with spinal deformities. A lot of these girls also present to us with cardiac deformities. There is no manner in which we will be able to perform all these surgeries had it not been for the greatness of Dr. Saurabh. So, Saurabh sir, I want to hand over the mic to you and make you speak for works over all these patients. By the time Saurabh sir explains his charm, I, will, I would have dissected here right till the perineum. The minute I dissect till the perineum, we will put a dilator and with the dilator, we will identify the perineum and the whole perineum will open up. Yes, Saurabh sir, the mic is yours. Hi, good afternoon. Uh, we see so many patients no, for vaginoplasty here. Yeah. But uh, like after thorough fitness, we take the patient. So I have not seen a cardiac case with this syndrome here in our institute, right? Correct. But overall, these are all. Sorry, sir, if you can speak loudly. Okay. Yeah. Now so is it okay? Because, because we want the mic to be focused yeah, on you. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Now is it okay? Yeah. Yeah. It's good. Yeah. Basically, all these patients are young females, so fitness-wise, there, there, there so is not much of, of a problem. Many of these girls also come to us with this pelvic kidneys, nahi? abnormal yeah. placed kidneys. Yes. Any yes. specific precaution because kidney no, parameters no. are normal. No, no, no. No, oh, no, no. Nothing to be done. Ah. All reports are normal, so yeah. we treat it as a routine uh, patient, you know. Right. Unless and until, of course, the reports are abnormal or some creat is there, Ra. high. Yeah. But that's okay. Surgery wise, avoid nephrotoxic duct, that's it. Okay. Painkillers, NSAIDs, and all, we avoid okay. in these cases where they have an abnormal report. Rest all, everything is okay. okay. Uh, we do as. Uh, Guys, this is, uh, routine one. this is one of those cases where I will show you the mold. Can I have the mold in my hand? Arun, can you shift the camera only to me? And can we have only me playing uh, and not the inside picture? So, guys, see. This is the way in which a rice tube mold is formed. You take a rice tube and to three, four parts. So you see one, two and three. We have formed three rings of the rice tube here. This is very important for you to understand these three rings. These three rings are straight going to go inside. You can see here what is there is this thing. Can you see this? Yeah, switch to both. This is where the dilator is present inside. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to cut the dilator. See this? The minute I cut the dilator here. Okay. Uh, can Sanchari get the mics also, please? Uh, some one mic to be given to Sanchari. Saurabh sir's mic can come. So this is where I cut this entire perineum. See this? I'll just chop it off using my sharer. Okay. Here, this is this is done. The the rectum and everybody has gone beyond that. So see, look at this. Look at this. One, two, and three. There comes the the dilator inside. I want jelly on my finger. Sanchari. You are the one who has published our long term outcomes. I want you to speak about the beauty of the vaginal length which is formed at the end of this procedure, you know, for the patients. So the uh, Mike, please. Standard. Mike to her. So the standard protocol that we follow at our yeah. establishment is we will typically call these uh, women for a diagnostic vaginoscopy post the vaginoplasty procedure in 10 days time. Correct. Right. So that gives us an idea about the immediate post operative length and I think uh, from uh, my uh, observation here in like over I don't know around 200 patients right now so it must it is around 10 11 centimeters easily easy this vaginal is, length yeah this Sutures. is immediate post op uh, vaginoplasty so we expect a certain amount of fibrosis a certain amount of canalization uh, restenosis and all of that in all patients like you know how the body heals that is how the body heals 
that's uh, i think sanchari sorry but i'll block you here that's a yeah. such an important point which the sanchari has mentioned you know healing of the body will have some apical fibrosis yeah. and as a result of this when we are taking these sutures here see i am going so lateral but i am going in the pararectal plane take these sutures perfectly look at this pararectal plane i am not dissecting the ureter i am not dissecting anything and keep that entire apex very very loose majority of the times what our we see because we end up doing so many redos isn't it sanjari yes. of people who have operated vaginoplasties before because we do so many redos of them i think this is a very important take home point sanjari i also want to comment because many people think that if this peritoneum does not get pulled out hmm. correct then the peritonealization will not occur and sanchari is somebody who has marked and published videos of this peritonization so if you can give uh, your insight on that sanchari yeah, so in the publication that is coming up i have actually included a video of a immediate post op vaginoscopy uh, where we can already see beautiful epithelialization happening at, uh, you know starting at the apex of the uh, artificially created vagina and uh, like it's uh, it's very healthy the healing is excellent the length is excellent so i don't really think that this uh, concept of uh, epithelialization does not happen without peritonization or without peritoneal pull through is really a scientifically valid concept so it it it, it is a uh, epithelialization is going to happen as a body's natural way of healing itself it is going to happen whether you do a peritoneal pull through or not there is no superiority of healing that is associated with a peritoneal pull through yeah another important point see when we do so many redos in the redo the peritoneum is not even available isn't yeah, it yeah. and the vagina is still formed you should be worried see the closure is very straight forward if you see i will close in a straight line so that if there is something which comes up to be done in the future all we have to do is just refresh on this and the entire area underneath that is going to be a virgin area mold we will recommend the patients to permanently keep the mold at least for 6 months okay majority of the girls are so comfortable changing the molds on their own that they don't even come back to us surgery finishes like this in a rapid time patient goes home in 24 hours i will be very happy to answer further questions on this uh, as and when you post your comments thank you so much for watching us thank you so much sanchari and i hope all of you have now subscribed and logged into the channel so that we can serve you and we can teach you surgeries for free thank you so much and bye bye